Hi, my name is Ravi Netravali, and today I'm going to talk to you about uh, Mahi Mahi, which is a new framework for recording and replaying HTTP traffic. Uh, and this is joint work with several colleagues at MIT, Stanford, and Harvard. So HTTP was initially created for web browsing, but today it's being used by a wide variety of applications to serve content between their clients and servers. Uh, so for example, instant messaging and video streaming applications, as well as many popular mobile apps are using HTTP today. And so given the prolific use of HTTP, there's been quite a bit of work done at multiple layers to improve the performance of HTTP applications. Uh, so client applications themselves are updated quite frequently. Uh, for example, many popular browsers offer updates roughly every six weeks or so. Uh, there have been new multiplexing protocols for HTTP that have been recently proposed, uh, such as Google's speedy and quick protocols. Uh, and there have also been proposals to directly modify both HTTP as well as TCP at the transport layer to better suit the workloads of specific HTTP applications. And so while developing each of these changes, it's quite useful to be able to evaluate how that change directly affects application level performance. So for example, a browser developer uh, may want to evaluate how a new JavaScript engine affects web page load times. Or similarly, a mobile app developer may want to uh, measure a the user perceived latency for a click uh, when using speedy versus HTTP. Today, however, it's quite difficult to evaluate these changes in controlled experimental settings. Uh, so developers today primarily use one of two approaches to do this. Uh, so the first is to directly test on live users. And while it's definitely useful to evaluate a change uh, directly in the environment in which they'll ultimately be deployed, uh, this approach does have several shortcomings. So first, uh, there's just been too many changes in recent years that have been proposed uh, to actually test all of them on live users. And in fact, many developers don't have access to live users to test on. Uh, additionally, in the early stages of development, an application or a protocol may not perform well enough to be tested on a live user. Uh, you know, they may be performing significantly worse than uh, what's being used in practice today. Uh, and lastly, wh while this approach makes it easy to uh, quantify you know, how a change affects performance, it doesn't make it easy for a developer to understand why a specific change led to a change in performance. And so to overcome these issues, there exist several record and replay tools for HTTP, uh, primarily Google's Web Page Replay and Telerik's Fiddler. And these two tools allow users to record HTTP traffic and then replay that traffic locally. These two tools, however, also have several drawbacks. So first, during replay, both tools use a single proxy server, even if multiple servers were contacted during recording. And so measurements with these tools may not accurately reflect measurements that are seen in practice when multiple servers are used. And this is becoming more and more popular given the rise of third-party libraries like jQuery and Google Analytics. Additionally, neither tool provides isolation for experiments run within them. And this is because both tools configure a user's host machine uh, such that all traffic is forwarded to the tool's proxy server. Uh, so as an example, consider a case where a user is running a browser as part of the experiment. All of that browser's traffic uh, will be forwarded to the tool's proxy. But during the experiment, if the user uh, decides to run another application, uh, let's say another web browser, uh, that browser's traffic will also hit the proxy server, and this can then affect collected measurements as it's not actually part of the experiment. And so to overcome these issues, we created a new record and replay framework for HTTP uh, called Mahi Mahi. And we had three main goals in mind while developing Mahi Mahi. So first, uh, we wanted to provide accurate measurements, and we achieved this by uh, preserving the multi-server nature of web applications during replay. Uh, next, we wanted to provide isolation for experiments within Mahi Mahi, and we achieved this by making use of Linux's network namespaces, uh, which are logical copies of the network stack that include um, routes and interfaces and so on. And lastly, we wanted each of Mahi Mahi's components to be composable for experimental flexibility, uh, and we achieved this by structuring each component as a Unix shell. And so in the rest of this talk, I'm going to first describe each of Mahi Mahi's components, uh, and I'll explain how they collectively achieve these three main goals that I've just described. Uh, and then I'll switch gears and talk about several case studies that we've performed using Mahi Mahi. Uh, first, we evaluated both existing and emerging web multiplexing protocols over a variety of configurations. Uh, and then based on the results of this case study, we built a new system called Cumulus, whose main goal is to improve web performance over long delay links. So Mahi Mahi has five main tools, by, um, uh, each structured as a Unix shell. So for record and replay, it includes record shell and replay shell. And for network emulation, it includes delay shell, link shell, and loss shell. And all of these can be nested within one another to test a variety of different configurations. So on startup, 
Each tool creates a private network namespace for itself. Uh, and within this namespace, it creates several interfaces, which I'll call ingress interfaces. And outside of the namespace, it creates several more interfaces, which I'll call egress interfaces. Uh, and these interfaces are connected via packet ferries. Uh, and it's in these ferries where the logic of each tool is implemented. So for example, packets arriving at an ingress interface can be recorded, uh, delayed, or responded to with recorded content. After setting up these interfaces, each tool then spawns a bash shell within that private namespace. Uh, so this allows users to run a variety of different applications. So for example, a user can run a web browser within the namespace. And the namespaces are configured such that all traffic um, to and from an application spawned within them uh, pass through the ingress interfaces and thus through the packet ferries. Uh, so now I'm going to describe a few of these tools in a bit more detail. So replay shell is used to replay uh, recorded traffic locally. And so note that replay shell does not need any egress interfaces. And this is because uh, only, it's only serving recorded content. And so no traffic actually has to leave its namespace. And so to actually serve the content, replay shell creates an ingress interface for each IP address that was contacted during recording. And on each one of these ingress interfaces, it runs a separate Apache server. And each server has access to all of the recorded content. And so replaying in this way, in this way has two main benefits. So first, uh, by having an ingress interface and an Apache server for each server contacted during recording, uh, replay shell preserves the multi-server nature of a recorded web application. And additionally, by configuring each ingress interface with the IP of its recorded counterpart, uh, replaying is totally transparent to a client application. Uh, delay shell and link shell are two of uh, Mahi Mahi's network emulation tools. And they can be used to emulate both fixed propagation delays as well as uh, fixed and variable rate links. And so again, back to our high level diagram, uh, both tools connect their private namespaces to the outer namespace, which can be either another Mahi Mahi tool uh, or in this example, the internet. And within the namespace, each tool creates an uplink and a downlink queue. So packets coming from an application spawned within their namespace are stored in the uplink queue, and packets going to that um, application are stored in the downlink queue. And it's in these queues where the logic of each tool is implemented. So with delay shell, packets are released from each queue uh, based on a user-specified one-way delay. So this emulates a per packet fixed minimum RTT. And for link shell, packets are released based on user-specified packet delivery traces. Uh, which specify when a packet can actually be sent onto a link. And by using de packet delivery traces to emulate links, uh, link shell can also emulate variable rate links such as cellular links. Uh, and link shell also supports the live graphing of network usage and per packet queuing delay. Uh, and it's important to note that by centralizing the network emulation into these two queues, uh, Mahi Mahi's network emulation tools can be easily extended to test a variety of other network configurations. Uh, so for example, we've created a loss shell uh, which probabilistically drops packets in each queue. Uh, so now I'm going to discuss each of the three main goals and how Mahi Mahi achieves them. So first, uh, for accuracy, recall that Replay Shell correctly emulates the multi-server nature of a recorded application. And we found that this leads to more accurate measurements. And so to evaluate this, uh, we loaded 20 of the Alexa top 100 web pages over the internet over a 5 megabit per second link with a 100 millisecond minimum RTT. Uh, we then loaded recorded versions of these pages locally over the same emulated network conditions with two tools, uh, Replay Shell and Google's Web Page Replay, uh, which uses a single server during replay. And here we plot the a CDF of the relative percent error of measurements with these tools as compared to measurements collected on the internet. And as you can see at the median, uh, page load times within Replay Shell are much closer to page load times that were collected on the internet. For isolation, uh, each of Mahi Mahi's shells creates a new network namespace for itself. And so this allows multiple instances of Mahi Mahi to be run in parallel on a single host machine. And so as an example, consider a case where a user is running a web browser on their machine, which is communicating with the web server x milliseconds away. Uh, now let's say the user runs two different delay shell instances, uh, each configured with a separate one-way delay, and each running a separate browser instance within it. Because of the isolation provided by each delay shell, the delays imposed only affect applications spawned within each one. And so the RTTs experienced for each browser are, are as you would expect. Uh, browser 1 still experiences x milliseconds to that web server, because it's outside of any delay shell. Uh, whereas browser 3, for instance, which is in delay shell 50 milliseconds, now experiences x plus 50 milliseconds to that <laughs> web server. And you may wonder how much overhead uh, providing isolation in this way imposes on collected measurements. Uh, and so to evaluate this, we loaded the Alexa top 500 web pages inside replay shell alone. 
We then loaded the same pages inside delay shell with zero milliseconds uh, inside replay shell. And again, we loaded the pages inside the link shell of 1,000 megabits per second uh, inside replay shell. And here we plot the relative percent error for page load times within delay shell and link shell as compared to page load times within replay shell alone. And again, at the median, you can see that the, each tool imposes only a fraction of percent overhead on collected measurements. For composability, each of Mahimaki's tools is structured as a unique shell. And this has two main benefits. So first, clients can run unmodified applications within each shell. And additionally, these shells can be arbitrarily nested within one another for experimental flexibility. And so to illustrate this, I'll show you a demo uh, where I will load a recorded version of the New York Times homepage uh, locally over an emulated three megabit per second link uh, with a minimum RTT of 100 milliseconds. So first I'll run replay shell, which will set up the replay environment. And if I run an IF config in here, you can see that we have an interface for every server that was contacted during recording. Uh, now to emulate the uh, 100 millisecond RTT, I'll run delay shell with 50 milliseconds. And if I do an IF config now, you can see that we can no longer see the interfaces from replay shell because we're in a private network namespace. But from the prompt, you can tell that we're inside delay shell, which is nested inside replay shell. And then for the emulated link, I'll uh, run link shell with three megabit per second link traces. Uh, and I'll also show you the, a live graph of the downlink throughput that's being used. <clears throat> and in the background here, I'll run uh, Google Chrome to load the page. So as you can see, the shaded region represents the link capacity, which is at three megabits per second. And once the browser starts, two more lines pop up on this graph. So the blue line represents the throughput that web servers are trying to use on the downlink. And the red line represents what link shell allows them to use. And so the red line can actually never pass the capacity. Uh, and Link Shell provides similar graphs for both uplink throughput as well as per packet queuing delay. Great. Uh, okay, so now I'm gonna switch gears and talk about several case studies in which we've used Mahi Mahi. Uh, so first we evaluate both existing and emerging web multiplexing protocols. Uh, so we considered HTTP as well as Speedy and Quick, which are two multiplexing protocols proposed by Google, uh, whose goal is to improve web performance. And with Quick, they use UDP instead of TCP uh, to eliminate the startup connection overhead. And then based on the results of this case study, I'll present a new system that we built using Mahi Mahi called Cumulus. Uh, and Cumulus's main goal is to reduce web page load times, specifically over long delay links. So in the first case study, uh, we had a slightly different setup for each protocol that we considered. So for HTTP, we were able to use a replay shell in its default configuration. Uh, for Speedy, we had to modify the Apache servers within replay shell to use Apache's mod Speedy module. And for Quick, uh, we replaced Apache within replay shell to use Quick test servers, which are part of the Chromium project. And to put all of these measurements in context, we, com uh, we compared these protocols to a hypothetical optimal protocol, which assumes that a page is loaded by a client making a single request and getting an entire site's content, uh, page's content in one RTT. And so to calculate this optimal for different web pages and network configurations, we consider three components. Uh, the first is the minimum RTT, which represents the time between an initial client response and the first uh, client request and the first byte of a response. Uh, the second component is the time it takes uh, to transfer an entire site's contents over a given link. And the third is the time it takes for a browser to actually uh, evaluate responses and render a page. Uh, and so to evaluate these protocols, we loaded the Alexa top 500 web pages uh, over more than 100 different network configurations with each protocol. Uh, and here are some representative results for uh, 25 megabit per second links with RTTs from 30 to 300 milliseconds. And as you can see in each of these uh, network configurations, each protocol is suboptimal, but more importantly, uh, the suboptimality increases as RTT increases. So for example, at 30 milliseconds, you can see that these protocols are fairly bunched up close to optimal. Uh, but when we increase to 120 milliseconds, the gap widens. And the gap widens even further when we go to 300 milliseconds. And so to understand why, let's consider how a web page is loaded today. Uh, so to load a web page, a client browser will make an initial HTTP request, usually for a top level HTML document. And it must wait an entire RTT until it gets a response. And then after processing that HTML, it may then fetch uh, image or JavaScript and so on. And so this process of making a request, waiting, and then making subsequent requests repeatedly occurs until a web page is loaded. And so essentially, 
uh, HTTP requests are being serialized, and this is leading to underutilized links. And so to overcome this issue, uh, we created a new system called Cumulus. And Cumulus does not modify browsers or web servers, but it instead adds two new pieces to a web page load, uh, the local proxy and the remote proxy. So the local proxy is a transparent caching proxy that the user can run on their machine, and the remote proxy is a headless browser which the user can run on a well-provisioned server. Uh, and each of these was implemented using Record Shell. So the local proxy is a modified version of Record Shell uh, that caches HTTP content in memory rather than writing it to disk. And the remote proxy runs its headless browser within Record Shell to record all the traffic that it sees. And so to load a page within Cumulus, a client browser will make an initial request. It'll hit the local proxy, uh, whose cache is empty. And so the request will be forwarded to the remote proxy. Uh, the remote proxy, upon receiving this request, will, load a, will run its headless browser to load the entire page over shorter delay links. So note that request serialization is still present here, uh, but the effect that it has on web page load times are much less because the RTTs are much lower. After loading the page, the remote proxy will bundle up all the contents it recorded into a bulk response. It'll send that response back to the local proxy, which will cache all of those contents and respond with, to the client with the initial response and then subsequent requests will be handled by the, client, uh, by the local proxy. So again, request serialization is present, but the effect that it has on web page load times is again very little because the RTT between the client browser and the local proxy is roughly zero. And so essentially, Cumulus overcomes the effects of request serialization by reducing the effective RTT that's experienced by a client browser. So to evaluate Cumulus, we loaded the Alexa top 500 pages again over the same configurations as before. Uh, and here we plot a, um, a result from 14 megabit per second link with RTTs from 0 to 300 milliseconds. And for comparison, I've also plotted results for the multiplexing protocols we considered. Uh, and each point here is represented as a ratio for that protocol with the optimal, and so being closer to one is better. And as you can see, performance with Cumulus stays much closer to optimal, so closer to one, uh, as RTTs increase, whereas the pr uh, performance of these other protocols steadily goes further and further away from one with increasing RTT. And again, this is because Cumulus only incurs a single RTT between the local proxy and the remote proxy, so on that long delay link. And this is how it reduces the effective RTT that a client browser experiences. Mahi uh, Mahi has also been used in several other case studies which are described in the paper. Uh, so we, in fact, used it <coughs> to evaluate multiplexing protocols on a new metric called speed index, uh, which has been proposed by Google and it measures the visual progress of a web page load. And we found similar trends for each multiplexing protocol with speed index as we did with page load times. Uh, it's also been used uh, to evaluate both mobile apps as well as multi-homing protocols like MPTCP over wireless networks. And lastly, Mahi Mahi has been extended to handle recording and replaying uh, streamed video. So in conclusion, I've presented Mahi Mahi, which is a new framework for recording and replaying HTTP traffic over emulated networks. And Mahi Mahi improves over prior tools in three ways. Uh, first, it provi uh, pr provides accurate measurements by preserving the multi-server nature of a recorded application during replay. It also provides isolation for experiments run within it. And each of Mahi Mahi's tools is composable for experimental flexibility. I've also described several case studies in which we've used Mahi Mahi. So we found that existing and uh, emerging multiplexing protocols for the web are suboptimal due to request serialization. Uh, and then we built a new pro uh, system using Mahi Mahi called Cumulus, uh, which overcomes the effects of this serialization by reducing the effective RTT experience by a client browser. Uh, more information can be found on the website, and please email us with questions at mahimahi at mit.edu, and I'd be happy to take your questions now. Uh, good morning, Steve New on Comcast. This is very, very cool stuff. Um, kudos for a nice live demo. <laughs> um, I have two questions. Um, the first one is I was sort of a little um, unsure what to expect when you said you implement this as a Unix shell. Um, it turned out that it seems like it works quite well, but I can imagine um, I might want to use something a little um, more general or broader in scope. Have you looked at how you could u implement this using containers? Uh, so so, so it's sort of a combination. So we're using containers to create the namespaces for each tool. And then we, I'm calling it a Unix shell because we're running a bash shell within them, within, within those Yeah, uh, so, so I was thinking more in terms of like, could I put uh, an application into a container and do it in a less sort of interactive way? So I was thinking in terms of, could you integrate it with like a Docker type framework? 
I see. So my understanding with Docker was that you could not nest uh, instances of Docker within one another, which is, of course, then what we wouldn't be able to provide this flexibility of testing all these configurations. Uh, so I'm not sure if it could be done with Docker. Um, uh, if, I'm, if I'm understanding the question correctly, are you saying that you, you don't want to be tied to using a bash shell within this container? Uh, I would only be tied to using a shell, period, right? So, so if I want to use it for testing, um, so this maybe leads into my second question, which is um, I think a big part of the appeal of, of HTTP record replay is that almost everything is HTTP these days. Mm -hmm. um, and in particular, a lot of stuff which is API traffic is run over HTTP. Um, and so my question, so the reason I asked about the containers is because I would like to test services that are using HTTP APIs. And so that was sort of my second question is have you in fact used this uh, in environments with potential sort of stub or mock backends that would, that could be interesting sort of extensions to your sort of your catalog of um, components. Absolutely. So, uh, so to answer the question, we have not yet tried that. Uh, that's definitely something that we would be wanting to do in the future because uh, as you suggested, you know, that would allow us to test even more a variety of applications or these APIs and so on to test. I think that the tricky part with this will be you know, how, how can you run, what, one nice perk with using these containers is that you can run these multiple instances totally in isolation. And so the second we get rid of the containers and having those, having that structure, you lose that benefit. Uh, so you, you know, if you're, if you're not using this to expedite experiments and to run a ton of things in parallel with different configurations, I think that would definitely be a good thing to do. Uh, we just haven't done it yet. All right, thank you. Thanks.